Annyeonghaseyo! Hi everyone, this is Ariel, one half of Soju for Two, and this is sort of an update video to a fun fact video I made in July of last year uh, about coming to Korea, the application process, and just sort of my experience of the whole, over the past five months um, since I've been here, and the five months of my application process. So I just want to give you an update, and one of my subscribers, Catch Me If You Wanna X, um, she asked me a couple questions, so I'm going to incorporate them into the video. So hopefully it'll help you guys while you're applying. So I started the application process on the 14th of March last year, and within five months I was in Korea. So it was a really fast-paced process, I would say. In my mind, I thought it would take a lot longer. Um, I think also some people have even much faster experiences. I mean, they apply and then they're like on the plane, you know, in a week or something. Um, or a couple of weeks if they have everything in order, or a month or two months. So I think the process is different for everyone. Um, I was applying for Seoul, so I think mine might have been a little bit, maybe a little bit longer because it was competitive um, getting to that point. But once I got past each step, it was really fast. So the first step was the application. Within the next day, the 15th, I got my first email from my Corvia consultant. Um, and, you know, just after that, it was just so fast paced. So before I even had my, um, on the, my phone interview with her, I applied for my criminal background check. Um, I was sort of optimistic and I was like, I know that's, I, you know, I went on the website and that was the thing that took the longest. So when I talked to her, I wanted to be able to say that I already applied for it. Um, so I applied for that like immediately and that's definitely the longest step. I think that took four weeks to get that back. So it was good that I applied when I did. Um, but so part of the application process, I mean, obviously I passed my interview with her and that's not really the, the big interview. That's just sort of like, you know, they just ask you a few questions, things like that. Um, and then I sort of found all, found out all the things that I needed. So Corvia is a consulting firm and they send you all like a checklist. This, this, this is what you need. You can also apply without a consulting firm, which I really didn't know at the time. Um, you know, I had done research and I think the most of the research I had done was the difference between Hagwon and Public. And I didn't realize that you could apply directly to Epic. So I applied through a consulting firm because my friend said it was a good consulting firm and I did a lot of research and I was like, oh, that's obviously the way to do it. Um, and I didn't even know you could apply directly. But I'm happy I didn't because I think my entire experience was not stressful because I knew I always had someone I could call or email and that was really reassuring to me, uh, especially moving you know across the world. So what do you need? You fill out an application form, which is basically your entire life. You know, the jobs you've had, your school background, your GPA, all of those things. Um, and I, I think the thing that I've noticed is that the biggest difference between people that apply directly to Epic and people that apply through consultants, the consultants, um, I think they're a little more focused on like your qualifications if they're going to take you on. Um, and I know things like GPA and all of those things sort of factor into whether or not the consulting firm wants to work with you. Um, so I think most of them require like a 375. I might be wrong on that, but I know I, my GPA is much higher than that. So I think that they were willing, obviously, to work with me. But I think that's the biggest problem that my friends have to apply directly to Epic um, was that they like a bunch of consulting firms didn't accept them or things like that. Um, so you need, yeah, you fill out your application and your application, you have to be really, really careful not to make mistakes. And I made, I remember I made like two or three mistakes and right away my consultant emailed me, I sent it back. So you can make mistakes, it happens, but obviously you just have to keep rolling with it. And you know, if, so, if your consultant sends you a message, respond immediately, immediately is the most important thing. Um, you need your uh, diploma, which I brought to Korea with me. Um, I guess I'm not gonna show you because it's stuck. Um, and I have all of my paperwork still in here. This is what I, I got when I decided to apply. And I just have everything in here, all my documents like sorted. Um, because you need your diploma, you need a sealed transcript, which you have to ask your school for. Um, usually there's like a nominal fee. I think mine was $25 or something like that. Um, don't open it, you need it to be sealed. Um, you need a criminal background check, which I mentioned I applied for even before I had my interview with um, my consultant because it takes the longest time. Mine took four weeks. Um, you need letters of recommendation. You need two. So first of all, here's the thing. Pick your recommendations carefully. Pick people that are obviously going to write you a good recommendation, but also pick people that are going to respond quickly um, and have it all, you know, make it a, a seamless process for you. There, I mean, I've worked in college offices before, and there are certain professors that are great professors, but are a little bit scatterbrained. So 
try not to pick those professors to write your recommendations because they won't remember and you have to sort of constantly be emailing them on, like being on their case. So really be careful of who you pick to, um, you know, your recommendations to come from. You need passport photos. Um, you need several. You know, I definitely got too many, but it's better to have too many than not enough. You're going to need them for everything from, you know, your consultant will need them. You'll need it on your application form. You'll need it when you go to apply for your ARC card when you get to Korea or your alien registration card. So you need lots of them. Um, but I think if you at least have, if you have 10, you're more than fine. Um, I think you only need something like four or five, but I just got 10 and so I set a bunch. Um, you need, if you are not a certified teacher, um, or you've not, don't have teaching experience, you need to take a TEFL course. Um, I took a TEFL course, it was $400, mine was, only took me about two weeks to finish, um, but it was supposed to be a six week course, it was 150 hours, really, really easy process. I know, f I have friends that have spent a lot more on them, and went to like in-person classes. Um, I would say, <clears throat> for me, the training, you know, in the TEFL course, um, it was, I think, worthwhile, but I think the practical experience in the classroom has just been insanely more uh, impactful to me. So I don't know if I necessarily use everything I learned in that course because it was a little bit, I think some of it like superfluous. So it was a really quick course and um, all my training I think has really come from the classroom uh, and my kids. Uh, you also have to submit a lesson plan and I was just reading my lesson plan because I got this out and I was like, oh my god, I had no idea what I was doing. But like, you have to submit, you know, I think a two-page lesson plan, which is nothing. Um, in my school right now, I have to submit, uh, I don't have to officially submit lesson plans, but I just have to keep writing them, um, you know, just as a way to, like, check. And, yeah, my sub lesson plans will be a part of teaching, obviously. And you need a letter of intent, so why they should hire you, that sort of thing. Um, and I'll tell you, like, quickly about my process. So I applied in March, um, the 14th of March. And I took my TEFL course April 13th, so within like about a month, I was already taking my TEFL course because I'm certified to teach in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm certified to teach high school, social studies, political science, and sociology. Um, but uh, that doesn't make me qualified to teach abroad, teach EFL. Um, so it's obviously why I took the TEFL course and. Basically, the way it works here, and this is directly answering Catch Me If You Want this question, you don't have you just have to have a Bachelor of Arts um, at least. Um, if you have a Master's, things like that, obviously you're more qualified, and it doesn't hurt. Um, but if you do not have a teaching you know degree or you don't have teaching experience, if you take the TEFL course, then you'll be certified to teach in Korea. And I think everyone needs to have a TEFL course if they're not certified to teach before they come here. So everyone needs it. Um, and then yeah, in April. I also filled out my application for EPIC, um, and I guess in March, no, in May, I had my interview, May 26th, so it took a long time to get my interview slot. There was a huge number of applicants, and I remember I was like number 36 or 46 or something, and I had my interview at 11 o'clock at night, um, and I was in New York staying with a friend at the time, and so I was like doing my interview. And uh, my interview was really short. I mean, it was maybe 40 minutes. And we did it over Skype, so definitely get a Skype account. And I think an hour later, maybe, um, I got an email from my consultant saying that I had passed. So by the next day, I got an official letter, uh, official email saying that I had passed. So it was really quick. I think other people don't necessarily hear back as fast as I did, but it was super fast um, and really great to have that like confidence that I had been selected. So I think the interview obviously went well. Um, and the interview was honestly less stressful than I thought it was going to be. Um, her English was excellent and I know we mostly talked about like my major and things like that so it was something I was really comfortable with and I really really it was a great interview. Um, and then I was yeah, obviously accepted the next day and then I had to file for I had to get my contract and my visa. The contract, I think, was a pretty easy process. Um, I got my contract, and then I had to take it to the visa office. And you have to give the consulate your um, contract, so that way they know that you have a reason to be going there. <clears throat> I have an E2 visa in the country, um, and things like that will come in handy then when you go to apply for your um, alien registration card, which I always keep, on me, keep with me here. And so you just need to have... Um, your obviously your visa and your passport. The visa took me I think two days. Um, I went to the consulate in New York um, near uh, Central Park, like 60th and 
Lexington maybe? Uh, I don't remember. Um, and so that was a really quick process. Got my visa. Um, and then the next, I think within two weeks, two or three weeks, I was in Korea. So once I got here, the biggest hurdle to overcome was my ARC. And that's just getting your registration card. It takes about a month to get this. Before you have this, you really can't get, you know, phone bill, um, you know, TV, cell phone, yeah, all those things. It's just, this is like the hardest thing to do once you're here because you need to, and basically everything in Korea, you just need to have a registration card. Now I never use it because all those things were set up and I only use it when I go to clubs as a way to like see how old I am. Um, but yeah, so that's the biggest thing once you get to Korea. So I was going to check and see if there's any other questions here. Oh yeah, so when you get to Korea, um, how does it work? Do you still see your consultants, things like that? So um, I am definitely still in contact with my consulting agency. Um, they're amazing. And I've done a few things where I've helped them, like a sort of train, I think, or just even give a little presentation to um, new teachers that are coming in, which is really fun. And I've also just got to hang out with my consultant. So everyone is just so sweet and they don't like invite you, bring you here and then never talk to you again. So I don't think, I think that's the great thing about having a consulting agency. Um, so you just sort of feel like you're not alone. And, you know, I've made so many wonderful friends through the EPIC program that I'm like, I don't feel like I'm alone at all. So that's amazing. And um, when you get to Korea, your school basically takes over the responsibilities of giving you directions and things like that in the place of a consulting agency. Because basically everything you do is going to be specific to your school. Though I have a ton of friends here that all teach in different schools and we all have sort of different guidelines we have to follow because it's all based on our school, on our district, things like that. But things that are constant is that your school will pay for your apartment. The apartment I'm in right now, um, I don't pay rent for. They'll pay your salary, things like that. But things that differ are how much, you know, your school takes out every month for um, your health care. We all have health care here and health care is amazing but every school has a different sort of budget or, or I guess how much they take out for that, um, how much they take out for your pension. Um, if you're an American citizen you can get some of that back when you go to America. If you're not then you're kind of screwed. Um, but you also, yeah, you could retire here as well if you wanted. Um, yeah, there's, so there's some things that are, are really constant but other things are totally different. Um, so every school is different when you come to Korea, you'll probably only be teaching, if you're coming to Seoul, you'll be teaching elementary. They're cutting most of the middle school, high school position, all of them really, um, at this point. So hopefully they'll keep elementary for a while, fingers crossed. Um, so the next step for me is renewing. So probably in February, I'll start the renewing process um, when I formally announce to my school that I would like to renew and see if they'll pick me up for next year. So hopefully they do, fingers crossed, because um, I really love it here and I want to stay. Uh, and I think I'm my, my next, you know, couple um, year goal is to get my master's and then maybe work for university in a couple years. So I also had another question about learning Korean before I got here. <clears throat> you know, I do understand a lot of Korean. I've had Korean roommates, um, you know, I have Korean friends. I watch a million dramas. Um, I've studied a bit of Korean. So... I understand a lot of Korean, but I don't speak that well right now. Um, and that's the thing about living in Seoul, is that everyone wants to practice English with you. So you can live here and not really need to speak <laughs> that much Korean, sadly. But I am working on it, and it's been slow. But the first couple months, I think, are an adjustment period. So now I'll get really into learning Korean. So that's my goal for the next couple months. So I hope this helps. It's a long video, but I just want to give you guys this information. Okay, bye everyone. If you have questions, leave them down here.